We had over 300 PvPers submit a massive tier list ranking every spec in WoW to see how the average player feels about the Dragonflight meta. Then we sent the same form to our network of rank 1 gladiators to compare the results. Last time we showed you how everything shaped up for melee, but today we're going to reveal the results for every ranged DPS in PvP while giving them our own rankings based on the current performance of each spec in solo shuffle and rated 3v3. So stay tuned for another epic tier list where we break down the ranged DPS meta in Dragonflight Season 1. You already know we started the S tier, which represents the best overall specs in the game. Of course, Elemental Shaman is the first in this conversation, and was the only ranged with a majority of S tier votes within our community. The same was true at the rank 1 level, where the overwhelming response was placing Ellie on the S tier. Prior to the patch, Elemental was clearly taking the lead as the top ranged DPS after some key nerfs to Shadow Priest and Demo Warlock earlier in the season. Even though Ellie saw a moderate nerf to its burst damage, this didn't seem to hurt too much, especially with sustained damage buffs to compensate. For the meantime, it seems like Elemental is the standout ranged DPS and is able to be good on its own rather than needing an assassination rogue to carry it. With that said, we think Arcane Mage deserves its spot on the S tier as well, but this requires a bit of an explanation. First though, Arcane was ranked second after Elemental in our community poll, getting more S tier votes than Shadow Priest. But among our rank 1 respondents, votes were split 50-50, which suggests that Mage is better at higher ratings. So while Arcane might be A tier for the average player, it is definitely a spec that becomes stronger with more experience. Also, we 100% agree that Arcane is worse individually compared to Elemental, but one advantage of Mage is that it has access to the best overall comp with RMX. For those looking to push high ratings, this is a big deal, and having the best possible synergy with the best overall DPS in the meta gives Arcane some huge value, and in this case, we are bumping it to the S tier due to its potential. To round out our S tier, we have something probably you didn't expect. Beast Mastery Hunter. So far, BM has been a bit low key, not because it was weak, but instead because other specs have taken their turns in the spotlight. In recent weeks, BM has posted some convincing results in Solo Shuffle, where it is now the second most represented ranged DPS in EU at the highest ratings. Outside of Solo Shuffle, BM Hunters have started to do exceptionally well on the 3v3 ladder, where their sustained damage output feels brutal when combined with healing reduction effects. And after a 5% damage buff across the board, we think BM Hunter will continue to excel in 3v3, where it has a wide array of comp options designed to overwhelm enemy healers. At this point though, you might be wondering about Shadow Priest. If Elemental and Arcane are S, surely Shadow gets to join the club, right? Unfortunately, no, but we're giving Shadow an honorable mention. By itself, it is noticeably worse than Elemental, and we think it is marginally weaker than Arcane. The community seems to agree, which is reflected in the fact that Shadow got less S tier votes compared to Mage, with every rank 1 respondent actually ranking Shadow as a strict A tier spec, which is opposite to the splits in voting we saw with Arcane. For now, we are putting Shadow on the A tier, but with a huge disclaimer that it is the absolute best A tier caster in the meta. Even though Shadow might have started the expansion strong, the nerfs in early January were damaging enough to shift public opinion and place the spec behind its elemental overlords. On the plus side, Shadow has one advantage over Ellie with the fact that it has access to one of the strongest comps in the meta with RPX. Like we said with Arcane, having an S tier comp is a big deal for anyone wanting to climb the ladder in rank 3v3. With Blizzard making changes almost every week, the meta could easily change, and if it does, be sure to check out our articles site for up-to-date tier lists. There you will also find class guides that include talent builds from rank 1 players that you can easily import for your own character. Using our articles site will also give you an exclusive discount code to skillcap.com, which features hundreds of videos designed alongside the most elite players in WoW PvP, including multi-rank 1 gladiators and even BlizzCon champions. These players even submit weekly arena commentaries breaking down some of your toughest 3v3 matchups in easy to follow guides. Everything at skillcap.com is backed by a rating game guarantee, where we promise you will rank up 400 points this season while actively using our website. Anyway, back to the video. Next up on the A tier, we have Demo Warlock, who had a convincing number of A tier votes within the community, with an almost identical split coming from our network of rank 1 players. Just like Shadow Priest, Demo gradually inched its way down the range tier list, especially after some key nerfs in early January that targeted pet damage. Despite this, Demonology continues to be an appealing option in both 3v3 and solo shuffle, due primarily to the control offered by pet stun combined with a built-in healing reduction effect. But for those of you Warlocks out there who absolutely refuse to play Demo, then fear not since Destro is also made its way to the A tier. Once again, this is echoed by the results within our community, where the majority of players agree that Destro belongs in the high tiers. For the most part, rank 1 players share a similar feeling, and here we are going to take the consensus opinion of placing Destro on the A tier. 
Right now, both Demo and Destro seem to be the standout Warlock specs, with Demonology having slightly better representation in rank 3v3 for the majority of the season. Destruction's recent surge in popularity came after buffs in late January, which boosted some of its damage, which was then met by a buff to Chaos Bolt on February 7th. Even though this change will certainly help their damage, it will likely be offset by a nerf to both Havoc and Fell Fissure, which were both working better than intended up until this point in the season. With that said, Destro currently appears to be keeping up with Demo and Solo Shuffle, so we're pretty optimistic about its future. The last spec on the A tier is quite interesting, with our community being fairly optimistic when it comes to Frost Mage. But for rank 1 players, we got an even split of votes between A and B tier, but we think there's a reasonable explanation for this. For one, rank 1 players tend to play whatever spec is simply best for their class. Raikou is one of the best Frost Mages right now, but when it comes to grinding the ladder and playing in tournaments, you need to play your best hand, which at the moment is Arcane. This means there isn't as much exposure to Frost Mage at the rank 1 level, especially since its damage toolkit is a bit easier to counter for better players. Even though recent tuning has been relatively uninspiring, we still think Frost Mage deserves its spot on the A tier despite lower levels of representation. Now though, it's time to drop to the mid and low tiers, starting with a spec with lots of potential in the future. Mark's Hunter will move its way up to the B tier after a wild ride of class tuning since the early season. If you didn't hear the news yet, Double Tap is gone. Yes, literally, it has been nerfed by 100% by being taken out of the game. Initially, this change seemed to sting, but it signaled that more future tuning would be possible, which is exactly what happened when Blizzard buffed Rapid Fire and Aimed Shot in PvP, on top of giving all Hunters a 5% damage buff, all of which might have been impossible with a cooldown as powerful as Double Tap. Anyway, we think Mark's Hunter might now be on a more even playing field with other ranged DPS, and with access to both Jungle Cleave and Thug Cleave, it should have a few different options in 3v3. And even after Double Tap's removal, experienced hunters are posting some pretty convincing results in Solo Shuffle. Next up, we have Devastation of Ochre, which has been very difficult for us to place on any tier list, given the fact that it feels like a true glass cannon. While it did get some damage tuning in January, Devastation still is a relatively lackluster defensive toolkit, which again is why the spec is so hard to analyze since it either one-shots three different players or gets trained all game and flops like a fish. What's interesting is that the average player seems to see more value in its offensive potential, with the majority of our community believing Dev is high tier. But when we look at rank 1 data, the story is the exact opposite, where the majority of high rated players think it belongs in the mid to low tiers. Here we are siding with the pros by placing Devastation on B, where we think it rightfully belongs. We know its damage output can be insane, but right now it is a spec that is so easy to punish that we don't see it being consistent enough to be on the same level as a demo warlock for instance. Oh, and speaking of Warlock, you probably have some questions about Affliction, who we are also placing on the B tier. The spec did get some tuning with the patch, including a redesign of Soul Swap, which arguably was a good thing since it now copies over Soul Rot and Phantom Singularity. Overall though, we don't think Affliction can keep up with the pace of the meta right now. What is interesting though is that Affliction did really well in our community poll, where it had a commanding amount of high tier votes, but at the highest ratings, rank 1 players seem to share our opinion that Affliction is a true B tier spec. What's interesting is that there's a similar story going on with Balanced Druid, who we are also placing on the B tier for now. Our community was actually pretty split when it came to Boomkin, with some people being pretty optimistic for the spec. But on the rank 1 level, there was a clear sense of pessimism, where votes were divided 50-50 between B and C. We're going to side with our rank 1 players here, for the simple fact that Balanced Druid might be a bit slow for the current meta. Sure, it can do a lot of damage with Incarn, especially some key buffs to Star Surge and other damage abilities, but Boomkins themselves also take an incredible amount of damage. Right now, healers are so weak that it feels impossible to play with a spec that is prone to getting hit as hard as Balanced Druid. In any case, we tend to agree that Boomkins are not in the best of shape. Rounding out the middle of the pack, we have Fire Mage, who our community voted into the B tier with a narrow majority. What's interesting though is the results of our rank 1 poll, with half the respondents actually believing fire could be high tier. Here we are siding with our community. When it comes to representation, fire is lagging behind other specs across the entire ladder. This might simply be the case of arcane being better, but a more important issue is, once again, the pace of the meta. Fire needs to spend a lot of time planting its feet and casting fireballs to reset combustion, and while this might have worked in Shadowlands, it doesn't seem to be working in Dragonflight, especially with healers being as bad as they are. Fire Mage might have gotten a minor damage increase with the patch, but we think it is due for a bit of a redesign if it wants to truly flourish in Season 1. But with that, we have our complete picture of the ranged meta after recent hotfixes and the 10.0.5 patch. 
At the moment, Elemental seems to be the most versatile ranged DPS, but Arcane Mages and BM Hunters are doing exceptionally well in rank 3v3, while having excellent results at the highest end of the solo shuffle ladder. Right now, we are pretty optimistic about Destro Warlock, and with more tuning, it could finally overtake Demo once again. With that said, we are hopeful for many of the mid and low tiers, and if the meta slows down, expect Boomkin, Affliction, and Fire Mage stocks to rise. For now though, that wraps up our update. We want to hear from you. Did you like seeing comparisons between average players and rank 1 gladiators? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, be sure to bookmark our articles page for the most up to date tier lists. And as a reminder, every article also includes a discount link to sign up for skillcap.com, which houses our famous class courses that teach you rank 1 fundamentals because we only work with the most elite players WoW has to offer. These same rank 1 gladiators upload weekly arena commentaries, breaking down difficult matchups in easy to follow steps. All this comes back with the rating gain guarantee, which means you have nothing to lose. So don't wait. Visit skillcap.com today. But anyway, that's it for now. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.